Man, I swear I'm having the hardest time getting started this morning. I feel like I'm just like blank. <laughs> I just feel like totally blank. So I don't even know what I'm, what I'm talking about. But the, um, I swear the night is just so weird. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't even, I was up in the middle of the night, like at 1230. I was about to even just get up and just do my recording and stuff. And I was like, no, just go back and uh, sleep longer. But I had so much that was going in my mind. And it was like, oh my gosh. So now it's like crazy because now I'm up and I was like, what was I thinking about? It seemed like there was so much. I was ready to get up right then. One thing though that I did notice, um, because I was just looking on, um, you know, social media while I was laying there. And um, I was, when I was going down all of my videos, I going down the little thing, you know, I don't know what it looks like on other people's pages, but all my videos. And then I was like, I don't know, something with my expression. I kept catching me in these videos and I kept thinking, oh, I look happy. And uh, the message that, um, that they gave me that was so loud was, um, that was why that it has been more kept kind of where I'm kept more where a lot of not people see me yet like even this morning like it's mental when I look at my TikTok things and stuff like videos I did yesterday and it's still like eight eight views eight views that is eight people I've seen so out of 20 almost 30,000 people which they limit me on followers but out of that eight people I've seen my, and I, I'm probably all eight of them because I'm the one who sees all my videos. It's just nonstop my videos. So when I go on, so I don't know what the hell's going on. But, um, so when I was on, uh, looking at YouTube, because sometimes, you know, I'll just go in and look at the numbers and just be like, you know, like what the hell, like two and a half years. And, um, it was so when I had seen this look on my face and they, that is why, that it has been more in the dark because if it wouldn't have been, you know, if I wasn't like, I can go on here every morning and know I'm talking to loving people that it is like, it's more loving. It's a loving energy, you know? And if it would have been from the very beginning that I was just constantly under attack, it would have just drugged me down. It wouldn't have been, you know, and it would have changed what I was talking about. I, I think, you know, I haven't had to sit and be defensive and stuff because that's what I see people do all the time. And people are constantly defending who they are, defending what they look like, defending what they think, just nonstop. It's like you don't have to defend yourself. That comes from inside of you. If you're feeling attacked about who you are, then it is an insecurity is something inside of you that feels, you know, like you're not good enough. And there's so much, like, uh, the LGBTQ, that whole thing. That is, um, you know, it's bringing up so much stuff in people. And, uh, like, this video I saw yesterday, and this is one of the things, is this guy has been married for 30 years. So he's been gay for a long time. That's one thing too, is that a lot of these kids who, uh, they, they don't realize what people went through before. And, you know, I mean, it was back in, I swear to God, even in the eighties and nineties, I don't know. It seems like all of a sudden it became acceptable for lesbians, but it was because lesbian porn and so then it was like, oh yeah, I want to see girls doing it. And then it became, you know, girls doing it. And then it, a whole, a whole thing seemed to break out, you know, and the threesomes and two girls and a guy and all of that stuff. Cause it took a while for people to even accept two guys and a girl. Even if people hear about threesome when it's two guys and a girl, it kind of is a different energy than two girls and a guy. Then they'll think like, so they're, um, but it kind of, before that, it was very, um, you know, if you were gay, 
and you went somewhere like a, a crowd of people, like a work party or any of that stuff, you were so worried that somebody was going to find out who you were. And there was so much shame about who the people were. They felt so disgusted with themselves. They felt so much shame and they felt like they couldn't fit in and people couldn't accept them and something was wrong with them and all of those things. See, that's because the, their soul had to come in to experience to get over those obstacles because those obstacles will hold you back from love and love is the main thing and there shouldn't be anything that holds you back from love and so uh, but you come in to experience different obstacles and and there's some people who just understand things and don't need to experience them because it's from other lives or other ways of knowledge that they have um, those understandings and then the people who don't the people that are judgmental especially if they're super judgmental then when they go to and, and it can be somebody born into their family who's gay so it has to really come up in them and so their judgment has to come to the surface so that they can try and understand their judgment and uh, you know and then you, uh, so many it is just about going in and going and playing the part and then you understanding you don't have judgment and so, uh, you know, the, somebody who's super judgy of someone being gay and not understanding it about love, it can be so much confusion just from the programming because they can't separate love and sex. And that is something inside of them. And that would be something that needs to come to the surface so that they can see. But a lot of people can't see stuff until they get to their life review because they're so caught in the programming. And that is why this is so significant for people to have to start establishing a sense of self outside of the doctrine that they have been taught of who they are. And so this... Um, um, you know, before, so the people who are all like gay now, you know, these kids that, you know, it, 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 it's so crazy because, uh, I don't, I don't necessarily believe in just gayness is, um, a thing. I think it is, um, you, you, there's attractions. So yeah, you could be totally attracted to, the same sex and where that goes in the, you know, psychology of all things and the spiritual of all things. But it, to just be attracted to one thing is, um, that doesn't, that doesn't like, uh, make sense to my mind, you know, where it would be like, no, I'm not attracted to the same sex. So then it makes or a different sex. So then it makes me think like that they have some issue with the other sex for some reason. And so it goes that but but there's such a separation with sex and love. And so an attraction has to do with something sexually. Love has to do with something that isn't necessarily about sex. Because you can love all sorts of different people. So love has to do with um you know like it's uh, this feeling and so then this overcoming feeling this overwhelming feeling of wanting to be close to this person and and, and then there's the appropriate kind of you know like like if it's a kid and you just love them to death because they're your kid you know you have boundaries or you hope some people don't but then um but like in a in a relationship, so you meet this person and you are you feel the love towards them, then it's up to those two people if they if they want it to be sexual. You know, it's however they want to express their love if they're adults. And so, you know, to me, the um you know, gay love or whatever is totally normal. That's a part of, you know, experience for a soul, you know, to get over the avatar thing. It is just when it just becomes like the only like this one thing, I would just say to the person that to probably, you know, look at, go deeper into your feelings of why. Because I think the more natural way would be falling in love with the person 
It isn't what falling in love with the gender is falling in love with the person. And so, um, but you know, like I said, there's so much confusion in our society right now between sex and love. But anyways, that, that whole long thing, but so, you know, there was so much shame and there was so much where people couldn't understand it. They just thought or they're just pervs. They're just perverted. They just want to do pervy sex. And so that is where like the religious people come in and start saying you're going against God and all of that stuff. But spiritual, you're here for your experience. You're here to grow from your experience. You're here to experience what you're, what you're going through. That's what you're here to experience. And so, and there isn't a God up there judging you. So all experiences are valid and there's nothing abnormal about any experience. It is um, all about growing and um, understanding yourself. And so the, um, the before it was, uh, was so many people would just stay hidden. That's why they would say that they were in the closet because they would hide who they really were. And so they would go out in the world and try and pr pretend like they weren't a pervert. And they felt so much shame about their attraction. And then, you know, their attraction was that, like, if you, if you talk to a, a, a religious person, like I just saw a girl doing a video to somebody and she was saying they, you know, she went and prayed the gay out of herself. Like she got over her gayness and now she's happily married and stuff like that. That would be somebody who probably just had issues or something that would, you know, every single thing, even that, if she's fighting against her own instincts and stuff, then that is something for her to learn. So if you come in and you are, um, like this is it's like so complex, man. It's so complicated because there's so many variables. And the whole thing, it always just boils down to there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with anybody. It's just so many people are just so lost. And, you know, that there's nothing, you know, if, I mean, there's people who are out there who do just do gay sex just to be perverted. Like, because they've got some sort of fetish stuff going on. And so they do use gay sex for perversion for some people. But that isn't, um, it, it, that's the, the separation in love and uh, sex. And so all of these distortions have always been, you know, because there's a spectrum. And so there's like always a group of gay people. Once it became where they started being able to be accepted, where it wasn't like, you know, everybody at the dinner table would just look at them like they were perverted where it started being, and it, it was kind of more of the outcasts, the artists and musicians and stuff that started accepting people into, um, you know, like, oh yeah, well, I'm weird too. We're all weird together, you know, and not be so like, you know, oh, you like boys and you're a boy, you're a pervert and stuff like that. Is, um, there was so much of that, but I think it was just this overall thing and who knows when and where it came from but so many people were so offended by their own desires that they would even be more angry about it and that's where this whole homophobic thing because it was people who were scared of their own selves that would become so against these other people because the people who just are out living their lives they don't give a shit you know, what the hell you're doing. You, you go do whatever you want to do. And uh, there, but the people in the groups. And so like in this one, so this 30 year old guy or no, he's, I don't, I think he's 50. He's been married for 30 years to this guy. And he said that he is breaking free from this LGBTQ whole thing. He said, you know, back when, um, you know, when they were gay, all they wanted to do was just be accepted when, when they were coming out. 
They just wanted people to accept him. And that's the same thing that these regular trans people, you know, the people who actually have transitioned and stuff, is like they just wanted to be accepted by the other people. You know, they just wanted people to look at him like a girl or see him as a guy as, as they saw themselves. And so they weren't trying to change everybody else. They just wanted to fit in. And the same thing with these gay, the, uh, back in the day, it was like all those people just wanted to be accepted and fit into society. And so, and like this guy is saying is like, I'm, I'm, I'm done with you. Like this has gone extreme. And he's like going through what I'm seeing all these different people who are breaking free from the organization and stuff. And the same thing is kind of going on with BLM and stuff. There's so much stuff where people are talking about, like, you know, all this stuff keeps going on. Where are they? Where's their money? What are they doing for anybody? What are they doing for communities? They're not doing shit. And so, uh, but the, uh, the LBG to that whole one, you know, people I think are starting to feel the pressure with their friends because of all of this stuff. And they're being like, Hey, I'm not involved with that. I'm not, a, you know, I'm not an extremist. I'm not out there trying to, you know, go in girls bathrooms or any of this stuff. Like there is, it's not the regular people. It is these extremists and who knows if they're MK ultra, if they're just paid or what the hell, who knows? But it is like these extremists that are there to push this, government agenda you know and i think that a lot the biggest thing of it is about like division it is about um just keeping us separate separate from each other and separate from yourself like they don't want you to find yourself you know they don't want you to be free to seek yourself and to experience yourself. You have to experience yourself to understand yourself. And how can you experience yourself if you're just stuck in a closet somewhere? So you have to be able to go out. You know, and if you have desires, then and it's other adult people, then there's nothing wrong with going and figuring out who you are sexually. I, um, to me personally, I think we're going to go so much more into things, not just being about discovering stuff through sex. That was like, it was going to be like the old fashioned way, the way that people did it when they didn't have any sense or something. It's going to be like, oh yeah, back in the day when they were just sleeping around, like, oh, gross. Can you believe they've just let all these people, like people they wouldn't even know, they would just go and meet them and stuff like there's going to be a you watch and see how people start turning on that. Like they're going to really look down on it as being like, Oh, that was so gross. Uh, one night stands. That's so gross. It will, it's going to swing in that direction and that, that direction, like, especially for somebody who slept around or feels, um, uh, you know, that's going to be hard for them either. If they're completely open to this thing, then they're going to feel like they're being, um, you know, controlled, or if they, um, they feel the shift and then they start to feel shame about their choices. And you got to remember as, you know, as everything is shifting around is don't get caught up in shame. You know, that is something that will hold you back. It will just eat you up. It just eat your soul alive. I swear to God, if you just sit there feeling shame over who you are, you can't, you know, um, and I think to get out of feeling shame is stop comparing. Like, don't compare yourself to other people because you're unique. You know, one thing, too, is like, I, I want to be unique. Like, I want to be myself. And like, I don't want to be like other people. And it is like a lot of people, you know, have tried so hard to be like other people. And now we have people who are just going extreme, you know, like, uh, I, I swear to God. And you see people with elf ear, like all sorts of stuff going where people, you know, just really want to be their own self. And um, I think that is so important is to not try and be like anybody else, just to be like you, to figure out who you are. And, you know, you may be like, you know, oh, I love how, you know, that person, they know so much about, um, 
uh, herbs and stuff like that. So I know I want to be somebody who understands about, you know, plant medicine, which there is a thing I just saw today about uh, ayahuasca. And so it comes, I think it's called vine something. And so in that plant, there's two components to the plant. And so the vine has some energy and then the two together make that whole experience. So this is legal and it's not, um, it's not supposed to give you some, you know, crazy experience like that, but it is supposed to be to replace like, um, St. John, St. John's wort and stuff like that. It's like the same thing where they said uh, micro dosing with mushrooms can take away depression and anxiety It's the same thing with this stuff. So, um, there's that. And then I saw another thing too about the diatomaceous earth. And that is another one of these mineral, uh, I think the boron is called a salt mineral. There's trace minerals, there's salt minerals, there's all these, I, I, I don't know, there's like so much to know in all of this stuff. But um, the diatomaceous earth too does so many things, um, just like the boron. And the um, the um, betonite clay, I just saw a girl and she had lost her insurance a couple years ago. And she had, when she lost it, they told her she had a whole bunch of cavities. And so she didn't know what to do. So she just started researching how to do cavities at home. And she started doing all of these different things like oil pulling is a big one. And you can even use that black seed oil and... Um, after you brush your teeth and floss and do whatever you do with your teeth, you put that in and then you swish it around, swish it around. I think you swish it as long as you can. I think 15 minutes, some people say. You can look up about the oil pulling thing and the different oils you can use. Um, and then um, it, it puts like all this stuff on your teeth so it doesn't build up plaque. And so it's really good for your teeth. And the um, she used the bentonite clay too. And I have been having that, like I had made my own toothpaste with the bentonite clay, the charcoal. I don't remember all the different stuff I put in it. But um, bentonite clay, she said that she used because that puts all these minerals back into your teeth. Oh, yeah, and the diatomaceous earth also, it, um, it clears out all of the funk that's inside of your intestines from the small intestines all the way down. So it's... Um, that's why it's good for the parasites because it just cleans it out so that you can, um, your intestines can absorb more nutrition then. So there's, uh, there's so many things that are just natural, cheap stuff, you know, and then they try and sell us like these expensive products. Like for me, I've been using, um, castor oil on my face for, I don't know, I think a couple of years now. And, uh, I I swear to God, I think that my skin just gets better. I don't feel like it's getting worse. It should be getting a lot worse, you know? I mean, I'm in my 62nd year. I have my 62nd anniversary coming up in July. And, you know, and I feel like that a lot of the lines are just like uh, fine lines, you know, that they haven't gone in real deep. And that stuff is like 10 or 15 bucks. And then you've got all these women. I see them all selling these products and stuff, um, you know, because that's what they want to do. They want to get a channel that has enough followers that then they get products and then they push these products, which I got that one, the hair removal thing, and it freaks me the fuck out. I don't I don't know if I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's weird. It's, it's so weird. I thought it would just be like this little zap, you know, zap, zap, zap. No, it's like this weird light flashes out and it burns your skin and it doesn't uh, supposedly doesn't burn it so much then you can feel your skin get heat but then afterwards then because I just did it right here just right there I didn't do it on any other parts and the and it heats up like it stays hot you're not supposed to go out in the sun for seven days like I don't know if this is like new technology or technology to destroy cells. So I'm just kind of leaving it until I do more research into and find out more about. Because I think some of this stuff, once they get, um, we get in the med beds and stuff and it gets our hormones straightened out. Our hormones are so jacked up from the foods and stuff 
So, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to use that thing. It, it seems so intense, man. I don't, I don't know. I can't believe how people are doing that over their whole legs and uh, all of that stuff. Seems like, man, you're just like cooking your cells or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it is new technology. I don't know. So, um, I mean, I know it's more advanced, but there's like, there's advancing in things that are bad for us. And then there's advancing in things that are good for us. And a lot of the things that seem like they're advancing for things that are good for us are like basic. Just like I'm saying with the castor oil, it is so cheap and they're selling you, you know, products that are like a hundred bucks and they've got certain medications in them. And then those medications make your skin addicted to it. And so then when you stop using it, your skin reacts. That's what they do with all these different drugs and shit inside of people. And, you know, I'm really curious about what's going to happen with this Ozempic. Because, you know, it's kind of like... I mean, it's hard to explain. Uh, uh, so I don't know how it's going to sound. But it kind of is like you know, this shallowness about our weight is, is humans and this body image, like there's a whole body image problem. And there's so much about like your soul. And when it puts on weight, it has issues that it's trying to protect itself from, or it, it, there's a whole thing about that. And then plus you have about how poor our nutrition is. And so then some people, they just, I mean, my hair, uh, some people then they will just eat and eat and eat because they've got, you know, a nutritional deficit. And so, you know, there's multiple things. You can't just look at somebody overweight and then just go, oh, well, they've got severe issues. You know, because it could be the stuff that they're eating is, um, you know, the uh, there's certain addictive things in the food. And then you keep eating this and it's not doing anything but adding weight onto you. And so, but they still feel hungry all the time. And so you have more things going on. So all things are very variable. So you can't just like, that's why judgment has to go. Judgment is pointless. It holds people back and it, and it puts people in ego like that. They're better than somebody else. And so the, um, um, what was I going to say? So the, the, um, the body image thing. So as, as this stuff is purging up, as it's coming to the surface, these different aspects of things that we need to look at, that we need to see. And so, because where I kept seeing this whole push at first, where, where I kept seeing like celebrities, oh, this is what all the celebrities use. The celebrities, oh, this is how they're losing weight so fast and all that stuff. It's all this, see how that is, pushing this unhealthy lifestyle. That is not a healthy lifestyle. If your body's holding on to weight, there's a reason. There's something going on. You need to tune into your body. You need to figure out like, you know, what's going on? How are you feeling? You know, I mean, it sounds silly. It sounds crazy, but you're not your body. Your body is separate from you. And as long as you're going around just ignoring it and just like, oh, well, whatever, get me from here to there. I don't like it very much anyways. It's not that good looking. It's kind of slow. It's, you know, you're just sitting there constantly beating it down. You know, like how you, how would you feel? You know, if somebody's sitting there beating you down, usually it just makes you not want to get up. So, you know, you got to talk nice to it, you know, go in and tell it, you know, how beautiful it is today and how much you appreciate that it just got up and walked you into the toilet. You know, you got to just be like, loving and appreciating yourself and that is one thing I mean that right there some people start losing weight just on changing how the dialogue that they speak to themselves and how they look at themselves so you know that can right there make you lose weight and that would show you that you put it on to protect yourself because you had uh, you felt like you weren't good enough you weren't pretty enough and so it didn't matter you, you didn't care and so as soon as you start showing yourself you care, then that way it does fall off without even trying to do anything. It is simple stuff like that. And it can be, you know, simple things with, you know, changing your diet. So not like dieting, but to stop eating however you're eating and start really putting in high mineral, high intense vitamins and 
um, minerals and stuff like that, not just like take a bunch of vitamins because that's been shown that that is, there's nothing in them. That's not, you're not going to feel any better because they're not doing anything. You have to actually go and get the root, of the, the plant that gives the mineral or the stone or whatever, you know. Like diatomaceous earth, I think it's ground up oyster shells or something. So is um some of these things that come from volcano rock, like it's all different things that they get these minerals. And um even just where I was getting the water out of the underground stream, that is where I started finding out that's got more minerals in it and stuff because it's going through the rocks and the water that they get from the sink goes through the plant. They take all the minerals and they strip it all out with chemicals. So you're not getting any nutrition out of your water. It's just a lot of chemicals. And so getting um, spring water that has actually got minerals and stuff is better for you. And but all of their you know stuff about the water companies and stuff and selling spring water, you know you have to find legit, um, legit ones because a lot of them, like I said the other day, they can just put on uh, names of the stuff. They can just say they're allowed so much leeway. Oh, and another thing too, besides McDonald's with all their humans, so now there's dog food uh, that is um, that they are got dead dogs in the dog food so they're cannibalizing <sighs> Fuck these people God, these people are just like so disgusting man um so anyways the um you know there's all different reasons why the people have got um things going on with the their weight but you know when people start feeling better and taking better care of themselves then that will all change and but there's steps to it you know there's a there's uh you know little tuning into yourself figuring out what's good for you and you know it's a process like you know and it's a process that like for me like has been going on for years and years and so it's not something that is just like done overnight and, um, and when I very first started, you know, I think, I think that there's been like periods of time where I've made some changes, like drop 10 or 15 pounds here, drop eight pounds here or something, you know, it's like, but I never was like really overweight, but still I was more heavier than I wanted to be. But they, you know, tell you, oh, well, it's cause you had a hysterectomy. It's the hormones. Well, you're getting older and stuff like that. None of that. That's all bullshit. It's all lies. It is. No. You don't just gain weight. Because you're getting older. We start gaining weight. Because they tell us that. And then we just start naturally. Just allowing it. Just be like. Well. You know. I'm older. Well. I've had kids. Well. You know. Just make excuses. Because they gave us the excuses. But the excuses. Are holding you back in your health. And as long as you take their excuses. And use them. Then you're, you know, surrendering. You have to stay um, on your health, just as you do at all different periods of time. Like you, guys, you should focus on your health throughout your life as much for a woman as you focus on it when you're pregnant. You know, that's how you should look at yourself all the time. As taking care of yourself, really need, wondering what you need, how to best take care of yourself, and stuff like that. You know, I don't know how to compare that for men I guess like you could say about like sport you know preparing for a sport thing or something but not all men are sporty so it is um you know it's, it's whatever it takes for you to really tune into yourself that will develop you and heal you and um, you know make changes for you so jumping on this Olympic train or whatever oh I'm just gonna run in and lose weight quick you know, because it's too hard to tap into my body to spend time on myself and stuff like that. And so it's kind of like that energy is coming to the surface. So I feel like it's going to kind of, I don't know, it's going to fucking blow. Like it was one thing when they have like, you know, they pull out the skinny clone and say, oh, look, she just lost weight. And they're not having the side effects and stuff. But then the people 
go start getting it. And then they start having the side effects. And, um, you know, for to go into your body and do something to the chemicals to make you just drop weight. It's so crazy, you know, like people will be like, oh, I don't want that. But then they'll run in and take these pills every day that are completely interfering with your whole system. And so, you know, I don't know. I, there was, um, what was that one called? It was like a stupid, catchy little name. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Walla Walla. It wasn't Walla Walla. It was something, but it was, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago or something where it was like a lot of women trying to lose weight. It was probably something that they put into our food and it, all these women started gaining a bunch of weight. So they came up with this other pill. Um, and I can't remember what it was called. Fefe, Fifi, Wee Wee, Way. It was something like that. And I swear a bunch of people died taking it. And so, and, and then still there's people who still come in and trust. So that is why I feel like this could be really kind of dramatic, whatever is going to happen. Because it is so much about the, the natural and the, the unnatural. And the natural is tuning into yourself, doing what's good for you, knowing what's good for you, being confident in what's good for you and all that stuff. And the other is being dependent of somebody else coming in and fixing it. And their whole thing has all been about manipulation. So, I don't know. Especially that girl that I saw saying, you know, come on my journey with me. And she's got so many health problems. I swear to God, she was the one who said that she was going blind a couple months ago. And that's how I tried to talk to her about that. And tell her, you know, the different things, like natural things. Like, no, she don't want to talk about no natural things. No. She was constantly going to an appointment, going to a doctor and stuff like that. So, you know, that is this dependence and uh, it's where that stuff has to blow up to show somebody to you're not you're you're going in the wrong direction. And that is what is so hard as watching all of this go down. It's going to keep being horrible, like worse and worse, like things are just going to get more outlandish and more horrible. I guess there's some sort of weird animal that is attacking people and dragging him up into the woods, like I guess it's in Kentucky. And to, I don't know how close this is to the Appalachian or whatever, but they're around like um, the woods. And something comes running out of the woods, drags them in there, and then tears them all up. And um, they're, it's total att animal attack, but it sounds more like um, multidimensional kind of creature like stay out of the fucking woods right now like they're supposed to be allowed lots of portals opening and, and the whole thing is going to be where we are all one you know like we're one with all of the other beings and stuff so you know we'll be interacting with them and stuff like that but there's um you know there's negative ones that hunt people and stuff like that they're still around and um, I guess the Euphrates, no, I don't know if this is a real picture. If it's fucking real, it's cool as shit. But the Euphrates is dried up. And uh, then they, I kept hearing they were waiting to see what's under it. So this could be a totally made up picture that somebody put. Because there's people who just do stuff like that. I don't understand why. But this is um, some kind of a statue. But you just have the head sticking up. And it's kind of like that other one that was kind of unveiled over. I think that other one was in China. There was people who were saying that that was just unveiled. But it, I think it was a while ago. And it looked like this so elaborate. This uh, like a Chinese emperor face or something. It's really cool looking. And it's like in the side of a mountain. And then this one it is like this really cool like fucking man. Yeah, if this is real, I would think they'd have to dig down and see, but fuck. The head, the people standing by the head, so the whole head is exposed. And the people standing by the head are like this big. And it's this giant fucking cool ass looking head. And I don't know, things that I kept hearing about like prophecy or something with the Euphrates. 
with something about the the angels are under there or something and there's more stuff coming out like um uh with the nephilim it's so crazy too is how many of the the religious people that they are just i don't know it's like a a different way that they look and talk and stuff like man i don't like this girl she was just she's telling these dreams and she's trying to do these pictures to show and this, so she's showing this picture of that she said was Jesus that came to her in her dream. And she said he looks different. And she said, uh, people are going to have to really wrap their heads around that he doesn't look like how he looks in the books and stuff. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I swear. Like I, it, it freaks me out sometimes. Like I, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to look at myself as being better or something. Um, but I definitely have to acknowledge that I see things very different than a lot of people. Like they're so held back by something, and it's not just that girl. It is like person after person after person on TikTok on these testimonials and stuff and you know there's a definite there's like different energies behind these groups like the religious ones the super spirits the witches like there's an energy just like with the LGBTQ thing there's an energy and so you know it's like that energy has to fall apart. It has to let be let go of. And so all the different groups are all going to fall apart. People are going to all have to go into, you know, independence and stuff. And it's sad to watch so many people feel so much like they have to apologize for who they are constantly. Apologize for how they look. Apologize for like all the time. And, um, and just like with the thing with the aliens and how many people like, oh, well, I knew there was aliens. Well, then why were you in the group that was making fun of people who said there was aliens? Why didn't you come on the other side and, you know, stand up with all of us who were saying there was aliens? Why'd you, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know. It, it, it just is, um just this whole way of uh, you know like, there's people out there like that are out there saying all sorts of stuff in uh telling people all sorts of stuff about um the awakening politics medical all all sorts of stuff and then um and then they'll start talking about some other thing and it is wacky totally wacky like, they could be sitting there telling you all about, this is, to me, like a common one. Telling people all about, like, uh, government or something. And then all of a sudden, they'll start talking about what they believe with religion and stuff. And it just is like, I don't know. It's like they're, they're talking sensible, and then all of a sudden, they just go whacked out. And I was like, that is where people got to see that these narratives, if you're following a group like that, and religion is a group, religion is like a cult, and it is, um, and it was created to use against the people, and in the people who are in it, you know, they're so, uh, but they just say wacky shit, man. Like, what was the one? I just heard this person saying, um, oh, God, yeah, that one where she was like, that she went and uh, prayed the gay out of herself, which, okay, that's um, because it's demons. Like, it's a demon and you have to pray that demon of lust or whatever out of you, which, you know, I, like I've said, these are energies. These are attachments. These aren't just like devils. 
Like where people get this idea like there's devils, that, that, just stuff like that. Demons and devils and gods in the sky and all of that kind of stuff. It's just like, just the way that people see things and stuff. It's, uh, it's um, strange to me. Like, um, and I don't know if it's just because of like now we're all talking about it so much. And, you know, and I always thought I was so weird. But now that I'm hearing what other people say, it's just like, man, I, I, I don't know why I was worried that these people thought I was weird. But um, so she was going on on, you know, that she had gone to get the gay prayed out of her. And then, but, but the whole thing was all about this devil and stuff like that. Like, I, I think, you know, if somebody has just got the impulse to just have gay sex, they're just impulsively just, I just want to have gay sex or something like that, then that would be like an impulse, like you would want to get control over, just like you want to go have sex with strangers, or you want to go shop, or you want to go drink, you know, go do heroin with junkies, like whatever your impulse is, that is for you to get control of your impulse. So if it's just about sex then you know but that's that's the difference if it's you know falling in love and wanting to be intimate with somebody that's a completely different scenario and uh, that isn't um why would you want someone to pray that out of you pray pray away my me falling in love with somebody because they're the same gender as me that that is where you've got to deal with your your um your shame or your judgment or whatever cuz that like, like that doesn't make any sense to me that's what i'm talking about like there's there's stuff like they can be saying things that are sensible about you know politics or something and then I'll, they'll start talking about this other stuff that is just like weird and this is like a lot of them lots and lots and lots and so to me, uh, you know, the awakening is to pull you into a conscious state of being and pull you free from all of these paradigms, all of these structured belief systems that have control over you. Because there literally is not just devils running around trying to get everybody. There's interdimensional beings that can travel through portals. Where uh, Portals are all around us. And they can travel around in portals. There's not as many portals in a city, but I think that is why they created these cities. You know, they they are not trying to get people out of the woods to save them. They you know they they don't give a shit. People who like old folklore and stuff. You go out and be around the old mountain people. They they know they are, they're not gonna go out and walk around in the woods by themselves at night. They know like there's beings out there there's you know whatever you wouldn't think they are i know them to be interdimensional that they can go from dimension to dimension and so they can come into this one and the there's beings that come into this one to to eat people just like you know people go out in the woods and shoot shoot animals it's the same thing so you know we are hunted by something and so that's all real that's real stuff and there's portals all over in the woods because it's out where it's not interfered with like there could have been portals like i think in a lot of the cities and stuff they've covered stuff up that is why there's things that are going on that's what i heard is something with ohio is there's something that's uh they've covered up and if that statue in the Euphrates is real, like they've been covering up so much of our history. And these people who are out there channeling like the Galactic Federation and stuff like that keep saying they're going to come down. We're going to find out our true history. Like there's nothing to argue about with people. People can believe in Adam and Eve. They can believe in the Big Bang. They can believe whatever the fuck they want to believe. You know, it's all going to come out. We're going to be told and shown. And I know what I think it is. Um, you know, I think I've mentioned it plenty of times. I think it's all about, you know, these advanced beings and the manipulation and science and uh, with DNA and stuff like that. And some of it has been for good and some of it has been for 
selfish reasons, which in, internally or externally end up being of a negative. So that is um, negative. That's what people go see. When you're doing for self and, and it's going to hurt someone else, that's, that's negative. So that is the energy that you're calling a demon. And, there, and there's so much energy out there that is like free energy. And that is um, why it's hard to like shake something like shame or something. Because that energy will get on you and it will build and build and build. And the more you feed it and the more that you um, uh, pull more negativity onto you, then the more you're going to feel that. And one thing, too, that is really important that I think people have really got to notice is how if you're sitting there hating your parents, your parents are the most rotten pieces of shit. You can't even believe how horrible, what the unfortunate thing that you were born to these people. So if you feel these people are the most rotten people in the whole world, how do you feel about yourself? Like, how do you end up feeling good about yourself if where you came from is so horrible? That is why it's so important to heal, to heal those injuries with these people, these people that have caused you pain and to realize it isn't that they aren't devils and demons and stuff like that. They're just people like there's a whole soul interaction that goes on. Like I've talked about a zillion times, like you come with these people to play these things out so you can learn and grow and um, the, the people who are um, the ones that do this stuff to you. It's not like they're doing it to try and hurt you. They're doing it because it's it's set in place. They can't change what they're supposed to do. It's just is going to happen automatically. It's not like that they can do something about it. And so the that's going to happen. And the whole thing has happened so that you can get over it. But then you have to learn to accept all these people and forgive so that you can look at them as like not devils and demons, but just other people that, you know, suffer along with everyone else so that you can feel then like, oh, look at like how empowered I feel. Like I can recognize these people are just injured. They aren't trying to hurt me. They don't hate me. And so, you know, it's really a gift. And then plus, you know, there's another thing too. Because even if your parents do things that hurt you, think about all of the things that they did that were good for you. Like my dad gave me such a good work ethic. And he he taught me a lot. You know, a lot of good things about me came from my dad. And the same with my mom. A lot of good things from my mom I, who I am comes from her, which comes from my grandparents, which comes from their grandparents. So there's a lot of good things about you. You know, the fact that I don't lie. Lying is, um, you know, I got that from my mom. Her telling us every day, <laughs> liars are the worst people in the whole world. That's the worst. If you're a liar, you're just the rottenest person in the world. Like, there's no place for you on this earth. And I think she felt that way so much because my dad was such a liar and he was always lying to her. So she was going to make sure we weren't liars. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good things that even people, you know, and it, it wasn't like my mom was evil. She was a teenager. She was a teenager who hadn't even come into her own. She didn't even know who she was. And she's with this guy. She wasn't prepared for the relationship that she was in. You know, that was to teach her. You know, that was part of her journey. It's part of her story. It's the chapters of her book. In mine, where we overlap, you know, those chapters, those people are in my book. You know, they played a role in my book. And then their roles changed throughout my life. You know, I did go through the process of, you know, feeling all different ways throughout time. And it all ended up having to go back to full circle, to me going in and forgiving and seeing the good and not and recognizing you know that there isn't some, they're not they're not evil they're not there just trying to hurt me they're just everybody's broken and everybody's trying to fix themselves just like i said it's like the teapot was shattered and all the pieces are laying down there trying to figure out what to do with themselves who are they what are they because all they do is feel broken and that's why it's so important when we come together 
then we feel the beauty of what we are and who we are. And so it is, um, you know, this whole thing is a beautiful experience, but it, there's, it's just, it's, it's like on another level or something of what, what, how people see life. And I just feel like once people do like true spirituality, not those, you know, jacked up marketplace thing, what they got with spirituality, you know, just get your t-shirt, go buy this many crystals, you know, make sure you know how to read tarot cards and, uh, you know, uh, dye your hair, do your wings, like all, all of the, you know, the stuff that, um, what it really is about is the journey to love self, to accept self. And in that journey, you know, the, the ones that cross your paths, in the empathy and the compassion that you begin to develop because you have an understanding of the path and you don't judge them because you know the struggle. And so it is, you know, this development of yourself that makes you into a better person that's more loving and compassionate and caring. That's the true spiritual path is to become your best self. Not, you know, how many crystals that you buy, how many walks did you do in the woods this week or something. Like all of the, like, I don't even know all of the powers of the crystals. I know that that's a whole thing that's very interesting. And there's so much about, like, that we were crystalline based and crystals hold uh, energy and now we're carbon based. And I think we're supposed to be going back to crystalline base and so there's a whole thing about crystals and stuff that is like, I'm not discounting the power of crystals at all. I just don't know about them. I just don't know that you can own a ton of crystals and that's not going to make you a healed person. It's not going to make you a better, more compassionate person. A lot of the spiritual people I see are very judgy. You know, if you don't feel good, well, you're not on the 5D. Get yourself on the 5D. Go buy yourself a couple of crystals and go on a walk in nature. You know, you're not meditating enough. Did you eat? Did you not eat your vegan diet? It's like all those things. Like the way you eat is obviously going to affect you. And, you know, and that's each person is completely develop the, that whole thing is their own journey. And like I said, this stuff takes years. And your journey just on your relationship with food can take years. You know, <clears throat> it's not like you have to just like, you know, I'm going to eat steak today and then tomorrow I'm, I'm going to be a vegan because now I'm spiritual. No, you can, you, you process through. It's when you feel bad, like when you are like, oh man, I just can't eat this. This is just making me not feel right. You know, you'll know, you'll feel it inside of you when you're tapped into yourself. You'll know when it's time to change your diet, to stop eating this, stop eating that. You know, it is when you're working on yourself, yourself will let you know. You, you don't have to do it because somebody else tells you. And, you know, the walks in the woods, like any time that you can get out of the city and get away from people and just feel your own energy and tap into the energy of nature, you're going to feel better. So that's a positive. And meditating, you know, centering and spending time on yourself, focusing on you know, what thoughts do you need to finish? What do you need to play out? What do you need to let go of? You know, to spend that time focused on yourself. You don't have to just do it with your eyes shut. You can do it in multiple ways. There's not just one way to meditate, but it is a focus on self, recentering. And so, of course, that's going to help you, you know, but it's not going to make you a spiritual person if you just do these practices the the practices should be leading you to releasing. So, you know, going and walking in the woods, when you don't have everybody else's voice, should be able to bring yours up loud and clear so that you face the things that you need to release. And the same with meditation. And so it should be helping you in your process. And I think ultimately it does no matter what, because I think that is why some of the spiritual people are having major meltdowns is because they're actually having to face some stuff now where they thought, oh, you know, all I have to do is just say I'm a really, you know, I'm above everybody else in my spirituality and that makes me better because I do all of the the rules. But there's no rules. 
The rules are what people come up with. There's no rules. The whole thing is you figuring you out. So, you know, and that is, you know, you you can go, you know, follow this one person and they're going on their vegan journey, you know, and you want to be a part of that and you want to see. But that doesn't mean that you failed if, you know, they um, they ate something different than you that day. You know, don't feel like you're failing because you didn't keep up with them. They're doing their thing. You're doing yours. So just don't judge yourself. Don't feel like you're doing anything wrong. You're doing everything right, no matter what you're doing, when you're focusing on yourself and you're putting your time and your energy and your effort towards you, then that's everything is right. And everything is, you know, to get to a point where you can just accept yourself. And it sounds so simple. It sounds so simple. You know, I think mean, a lot of people think, well, I accept myself. And yeah, you accept yourself until the stuff starts coming up. And you start, you know, remembering this, remembering that, feeling this shame, feeling that way, you know, you start seeing, then, you know, that can change your attitude. And so those things are all things to just let go of, you know, they're not coming up. I think an important thing to remember is that you don't have to know something before you know it. And even if you made the same mistake several times, then obviously you didn't know it. It was when you knew it is when you know it. That, don't beat yourself up like, I should have known this earlier. I should have done this before. I should have, I should have, I should have. Don't do that. Just be like, you know, get excited when something clicks. When it's like, oh my God, I just broke program. I just fucking realized something. Get excited about it. Don't feel like, oh my God, why didn't I see that sooner? Why didn't I do that sooner? It doesn't matter. You're on your own journey. And it is going to be something like you've never experienced before. That life is very different when you are when you're focused on self and you're coming from from this place, coming out rather than everything coming at you. It is a, it's a different way. So, and it's just healthier. You'll feel better. You won't feel triggered. And even when you do get triggered, you just go be so quick to be like, you know, just releasing stuff. Be like, oh yeah, well, I guess I am kind of like that. Yeah, I am kind of this way. You know, do I want to stay that way? Am I annoying myself or am I okay with myself? You know, it's for you to decide. It doesn't matter if you're annoying to you know, all of those people, well, you know, this is who I am. Sorry if you're annoyed. You don't have to hang out with me then, you know. It's most important thing is being true to yourself, not trying to conform to be acceptable to others. Because even if you end up having others go away because you're just a little too annoying, then the people you don't annoy, it makes room for them to be able to come up and, uh, you know, do their same weird quirks. And you guys all go off and be quirky together it is, you know, and those people will go find their people. So, oh, now I'm getting a call. So anyways, I'll talk to you later. Bye.